God's heart burns passionately for lost people and um, people need to hear about his son and the Lord's God the Father's heart is aflame on this one and any church including the Christian Family Center that says they are a follower of Jesus Christ will also be aflame and have a heart that aches and is on fire to want to tell people about who Jesus Christ is, that that he is the only answer for humanity. And for people to hear the message of Christ, who he is and what he did on a cross and how he died for our sins, revealed the Father's love like nothing else. You know, it wasn't the Roman nails that held him to the cross. It wasn't the ropes. It wasn't the will of of those executioners. He could have snapped his fingers and 100,000 angels could have come and wiped out the Roman Empire. It was his love for you and me that he was compelled to go to the cross and nothing could stop him from doing that. And so he himself just, he gave his life over to save us. It wasn't human beings that killed him because he could have lived on the cross for three days. He was strong carpenter he had big muscles he didn't have a pot belly he had big muscles and strong and he did a lot of walking and exercising and walking up and down so he was a strong man but uh, the Romans freaked out when when he's talking and he's forgiving them for murdering him and then he says father into your hands I commend my spirit I think there would have been a smile on his face he just goes shook And they're going, what's happened? He's alive, he's gone. That's why they said, surely this is a God man. The centurion saw a lot of people die. He was an expert in killing people. He was an executioner. He says, I haven't seen that before. Only God can choose to stop his own heart at an instant like that. You can't do it, no one can do it. So when he was ready, he gave up his life and he says, and I can take my life up again. He did it for you and me. And he rose again and and broke the powers of death and hell and now was able to bring forgiveness, the gift of forgiveness into human beings' lives that could restore them back to a perfect God and peace with him and then peace in their hearts and then when they have peace with God and a sense of forgiveness for all their sins and guilt and shame, they can live in forgiveness with other people, transforming the world. He went back to heaven And he sent the Holy Spirit, the second gift, the gift of the Spirit, the gift of forgiveness to save us, bring us back to the Father, and the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower our lives, to help us understand who he is, but to empower us to better able communicate who he is, to empower our witness to touch the entire world. Wow, look, look at Acts 1.8. This is the key verse we've been sharing. And I listened to Tim, Pastor Tim's message last Sunday. I was away and, uh, you know, you can get it on your phone and you just press the thing that says Christian Families. And if I can do it, I find it, I press it, and Tim appears. And he preached the message to me. If I can do it, and I'm quite backward when it comes to modern technology you don't have to miss a Sunday if you just if you miss a Sunday because you're half dead that's the only reason why you can't be at church you're really you know like then you can download the message and listen to it It was a great word on Samaria he shared that last week but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you this is Dr. Luke saying recording the words of Jesus. And that word power in the Greek is the Greek word, and the Greeks love this word. It's the word dynami, or the anglicized is dunamis, but it's dynami, and it's the root word for dynamite. You will receive dynamite from heaven. That's what he's saying. And what does dynamite do? Bang! It shifts things. It moves things. Spiritual dynamite from heaven. It's going to come upon you and you will be my witnesses. You're going to be witnesses of who I am just to Adelaide or just to South Australia or just to Australia. No, he says to the whole world. 
So we reach out Jerusalem, Adelaide. We reach out Judea, South Australia. We reach out to our Samaria, Australia. But we're to reach out to Papua New Guinea and to Israel and to Africa and Asia and all the nations of the world. Notice he didn't say then. You know, when you've reached Adelaide, then consider South Australia, then Australia. He says, and, 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 at the same time, he says this. Wow. At the same time. We can't be a New Testament church. Hear me, Christian Family Centre members and friends, we cannot be a, a New Testament church and say that we follow the Acts pattern if we're not burdened for all the people groups of the world. Yes, and our world is going to hell. Our world is in a mess. It's in a lot of trouble. My background in, in study is history, and I still read and study history. I did my major in history. I read a lot of history books, even now, just as a hobby. I read history books and I watch snooker games. <laughs> the greatest sport in all the world. Download Ronnie O'Sullivan, the greatest snooker player ever that's played the game, and he will mesmerise you, okay? The great O'Sullivan. Anyway, it's just nothing to do with my message. I thought I'd just throw that in. That's all. And I've lost my train of thought. I don't know what I'm talking about and why I'm here. But when you read history, our world right now, 2016, reminds me, the last six or seven years, reminds me of what the world was like between 1910 and 1914, before the cataclysm of the First World War. There are forces unleashed in our world there are people filled with rage and hatred, racist ideologues who hate and who want to kill people who look different to them, who believe different to them, who practice their religion differently or their, their politics differently. And it's there. The Middle East, you see it. You see it in Eastern Europe right now. You see it in the South China Seas where you could have Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, all those nations. There could be a war that breaks out with China. Last time it happened was 1979. The Vietnamese thrashed the Chinese. They thought they would gain natural antipathy between the Vietnamese and Chinese. The world's dangerous. That's why we're building submarines and, and, and Australia's getting itself up. And if we didn't have the American alliance, we would have to double our expenditure, probably to another 30, 40 billion a year in defence stuff. And the world's dangerous. I hope I'm a false prophet here. I don't like the signs that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of hatred, a lot of racism, a lot of animosity, a lot of ambition, a lot of crazy men. No women, thankfully. Crazy men, full of pride, and think that they're better than others. and want to kind of use state power for their own purposes. It's, it's unhealthy. The only answer for our world is Jesus Christ. He is sovereign over the world. Okay, evil men do terrible things. As we know, the First World War, Second World War, look what's happening in the Middle East. Evil men, evil women do terrible things. But Jesus is on the throne. I'm just saying that the world needs Jesus Christ more than ever today. In China, they're telling us there's something like 150 million Christians now. Officially, the communist government says about 60, 70. But they, the, the, the Economist magazine, which is a secular magazine, predicts it's probably twice that maybe heading up to 150 million. That's one in nine people are practising Christians. Out in the provinces, they're wrecking churches. They're taking down crosses. 3,000 churches have been ransacked. Property's been stolen by petty little, little kind of dictators who are not under the central government. China itself could dissipate, disrupt, and become a, a, a whole like a, a bunch of European states. No one knows what's going to happen. The Economist predicts it could be 350 million Christians by 2036. You think about that, the largest Christian nation in the world. Who knows what's going to happen when that government system collapses? And it will one day as all dictators collapse, all rotten systems uh, that are corrupt break up. What's going to happen there? But somehow Jesus, King Jesus, is working in spite of the politics, in spite of the evil, and people are coming to Christ. And as Tertullian, the great church father, said, the blood of the saints is the seed of the church. You can't kill the church. Jesus is, is the ruler of the universe. 
He rose from the dead, far above all principality and power. And he has all authority. But now he's saying, if you're on my side, You've got to be on fire to let people know because I love people, I love the nations, and I want them to come to faith before his return. So Acts 1.8 is a fantastic statement. Well, check it out again. It's a great statement. That you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, Dr. Luke also recorded this In his gospel, the statements of Jesus, each of those men who wrote the gospels, kind of put a slant to the Great Commission. So Jesus obviously talked a fair bit about his final words, and they picked it up. And and Luke, in, in chapter 24, we don't refer oftentimes to this particular aspect of the Great Commission, or this version. But it's fantastic. It's a fuller statement than Acts 1 8, which he he recorded. It says, Jesus came to them. This is what I told you while I was still with you. Verse 44. Everything must be fulfilled about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. So Jesus is saying that he is the number one subject of the Old Testament. The whole Old Testament points to him and to his cross and resurrection and the gift of forgiveness and the gift of the spirit, the age of the church. He says, I'm the major theme of the Old Testament. It's about me. It's about God's plan of salvation. It's going to be accomplished through me. Then he opened their minds, this is the 12, up to 120 people that could have been there, so they could understand the scriptures. Oh, how we need the Holy Spirit to open our minds to understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer through death on a cross and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to his name, where? To all nations. The message that we have is we say, people, change your minds. Change your belief framework. You're wrong. God is right. God is the answer. That's what repentance is. Change your mindset and and, and look to God. He is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Your own beliefs and your own systems, they're wrong. They're going to just destine you to hell. The only way to get out of hell is by changing your thinking and look to Christ who can bring forgiveness and remove the dark barrier between lost humanity and a perfect God. The cross is the bridge between us and God, between earth and heaven. In fact, it bridges us and we escape hell and go straight to heaven. This is what Christ is saying, that forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Tell people they know to see things from God's perspective. And that's what the message of hope is. That's what we proclaim week by week. The world will try and tell you, and the media and and, and modern technology will tell you how to think. Why we come to church each week, why we read the Bible each day, why we're in small groups and get connected, is because we need our minds continually renewed to be thinking God's way. So we don't block what God wants to do. Otherwise, the fire within will become a flickering little, little, little flame, like a, like a little candle that just says, go bigger, bigger, rather than a raging fire. When we see things from God's perspective. And he goes on and he says here, you are witnesses of these things. You're witnesses of this. Church, if our vision does not encompass the entire world, then it's too small. Seriously. Johnny Zoom has just shared with us his passion. He goes every year. Some of you go overseas to short-term missions. Fantastic. And uh, you may not be able to, to go physically, but you can go mentally. You can go with your mind. You can go with your heart. You can go with your money. Many of you went with your money today to the Philippines and Sri Lanka. And what you gave is going to go and help little kids come to faith and for a better life. So you may not be able to go, but you can go with your thoughts, your prayers, your money, your interest, your heart. Some of us have the privilege of being able to go. And uh, I lead our denominational family here in Australia. It's a privilege to to head our movement that now is just doing so many amazing things right across the world. But we have a big, daring faith vision. 
by our 100th birthday in 2045, and I'll be 91 years of age, maybe using a stick. No, no, forget the stick. Moses didn't have a stick. I'll be walking into the conference. Do you know what we've said? We've said by 2045, our 100th birthday, the CRC wants to have an ongoing ministry presence in every nation of the world. And right now we're in 60 nations. 60 nations. And, um, and that's a, a... We as a local church, if we don't have a concern for our indigenous peoples of Australia, their people groups, their nations... Right now in Central Australia, we have something like seven nations represented. You might think they're all just one people. No, they're not. They've got different languages, different cultures. You go to the Alice Springs Church, about nearly 200 people there now. You've got one group sitting there, another group sitting there, another group. They speak different languages. So you just see them and say, oh, they're all black fellas. No, they're not. They're people. They're nations. They have their language and their culture. Sadly, so many of the languages are extinguished. But when white settlement came, there was just ignorance. People didn't know. They just said, oh, you know, they don't know anything. They knew a lot. You try and live in the desert, you'll die within three days. They live there. They know how to use the land. Burke and Wills are an example. The great white men who went to central Australia and they went right up to the Gulf of Carpentaria, came back and all the food had gone and they missed the, the camp, they missed the, the group that was going to take them back to Melbourne. And so old Burke and Wills go, well, a bunch of black fellas out there, they shot their guns off and shoot them off. And one man thought, so they said, we'll just stay and eat the fish at Cooper's Creek. They just stayed there and ate the fish. And they all died. One guy was smart enough, he goes, these black fellas, they've been living here a long time, I think I'll go and join them. So he joined them and they made him an honorary Aboriginal. You joined the Aboriginal, they welcomed him and he became one of them. He lived for months eating what they ate, a balanced diet. Ignorant people, weren't they? They knew how to eat. They, they were intelligent. They understood. The white fellas were the dumb ones. They just died eating fish. There, so the great Burke of Wills perished. These people need the Lord. Our indigenous people are in terrible need in many communities. Easy for us to criticise them. But you have your land invaded. You have somebody coming in and just kicking you off. That's basically what happened. It's what happened with colonization. They need the Lord. We've got to love them. We've got to reach out to them. And I'm so proud and thrilled that in Central Australia, we've got these nations that, that are meeting. And then in Armata and Ernabella, Steve's just been there and he's got Reuben sitting in the middle, this beautiful big Aboriginal man. And, as, and they went there and they had a little revival in Armata. He leads that group. So it's great that we're reaching the nations, their nations. It's not just physical nations, nation states, it's people groups. And we have people groups in Australia that need to be reached. Wow. Oh, I feel a little bit passionate this morning. Just a little bit. Hey, you know what? This cannot be achieved without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Really. We cannot achieve this without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And he said this to them in, in Luke 24. I didn't finish it. He said, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been, what? Clothed with power from on high. I love the metaphor that he uses here of being clothed. It's like, you know get clothed with the spirit you're naked you're very vulnerable wouldn't it be awful if half of you came this morning to church and sat down there stark naked that would be a sight for sore eyes wouldn't it good grief you'd be you're clothed to feel secure safe it's like you're comfortable and he says you are naked and vulnerable and in a difficult state if you're not clothed properly spiritually and the only way you can be clothed properly is to be clothed with the presence of God the power of God that's what he's saying here but you're going to be clothed with power from on high wow did you know that Abraham the founder of the Hebrew nation 2,000 years before the birth of Christ was told by God about his intention to save the lost world through his son. Look at Galatians 3.8. This is Paul says, Scripture foresaw that God would justify or make right with himself the Gentiles, non-Jews, by faith, by dependence on, on, on him. 
and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. He says, all nations are going to be blessed through you. Abraham, you're an old man and you've got an old woman for a wife and you can't have kids. She's infertile. So, yep, I'm going to produce a baby through you and through that baby, I'm going to visit the planet. The eternal son has got to have a human body. He's got to find a family. And he chose Abraham, an imperfect man. And he says, through you, I'm going to bless the nations, Australia, all the continents of the world. All nations will be blessed through you. He explained to Abraham the gospel, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the giving of the spirit, the gift of forgiveness. Even King David knew God's heart was to reveal his salvation through his son, to all the nations. Have a look at this. We sang this today. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. This messianic psalm. See, David was an ancestor of Abraham and Joseph and Mary came through the line of Jesse and David, his his dad. So, So the eternal son had to be born through a human being, lineage. And he says to David, the ends of the earth are going to be the possession of Christ. I'm going to make the nations your inheritance. Hey, the Christian Family Centre is fully committed to reaching into the nations of the earth. We really are. Jeremy Steele, who was our youth leader, youth pastor here for several years and nine years in Papua New Guinea as a missionary, now relocated in, in, in Cairns, and we're supporting him, a whole pile of us that are, that are supporting him on a, to live, and now he's, just, he's now a missionary to the nations, assisting our international missions director, Barry Silverback. He's already been to Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands. He's been to Myanmar. He's heading now to India and uh, where the CRC is. So we have somebody from here who is actually ministering to the nations. Virginia Bowering, who uh, John Zumas went to see. She's been a missionary in in the Philippines. We in our Hobart church support her. I go to Papua New Guinea twice a year. I go to Africa yearly. This year I'm going to Israel, taking my wife on a little bit of a tour, but I'm also preaching either in Bethlehem or Jerusalem. Isn't that something? Wow, I hadn't thought of that. I didn't plan that one. That's going to be great. So I'll send you a video, Technicolor, well edited by Kathy Vasilakis for you. Hey, it would be wrong for us not right now to pray for the nations. That's something we've got to do. And I've asked a couple of people to come forward and to pray for the nations. I think it'd be good for us before I finish up this message. And I would like... Jackie Cheriu and, and, uh, and Jay from Korea, Dan Huber and Gary McLaughlin. We're going to pray for Africa. Jackie's going to lead us in prayer. We're going to pray for Asia. Jay's going to lead us, a Korean brother who's joined us recently. We're going to pray for the Americas, Dan Huber, North, Central and South America. We're going to pray for Europe, Gary McLaughlin. And so let's, let's stand together, church, and let's intercede because our world's in trouble. The world needs Jesus Christ. And so we can do something. What the scripture says here, let us pray and believe. And so each of you now lead us in a prayer of intercession for the African continent. Thanks, J- Jackie. That's on. Yeah. We lift your name, O oh God, this morning. We thank you, God, for Africa, Jehovah. We thank you, Lord, this morning as you've declared in your word, O oh God, that you've sent your power to go forth unto us, O oh God, and to fire us, O oh King of glory. And I pray this morning, Jehovah, that you are going to raise Africa, God, to be a fire, God, to fire other nations, yes, God. Lord. That you are going to pour your spirit upon the nation of Africa. You are going to pour your power upon the leaders of Africa, God. Amen. They will worship Amen. you, God, in Thank true you, and in spirit, O oh God, in Thank the mighty you, name of Jesus. Father, I decree this morning, God, that steer a nation into Africa, God. Yes, the nation, Lord. God, that will arise and say we are going Amen. for Jesus. And leave every evil things that they are going around, oh God. I bless you, God, because this morning, God, you are hearing our words, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the Son of God whom you sent for them and say he is enough for us, oh God. We thank you, God, because we can't do Africa without you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Set the children free. Set the mothers free in Africa, God, from slavery, O King of glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. From the north up to the
the south God of Africa. My father set them free, God. We thank you, God, and we honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we sweet. We sang this morning, Father, we sang, Father, give us the nations. Father, your word says in Psalms 2, give us the nations, petition to me, supplicate me, ask of me, and I will give you the heathen as an inheritance. Father, we, 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 we raise up, we ask you this morning, we cry out for the nation of Europe, Lord, for the continent of Europe, Lord God Almighty. Father, we pray, Father, we cry out, Father. Father, we, we, we lift up that nation to you, Lord God. We lift up the leaders, Father. We pray praise, Lord God. We pray that you raise up, Father, leaders, Father, godly leaders, Father, that will be ambassadors of the gospel, Lord God Almighty, that will make wise decisions, Father, on behalf of their countries, Lord God Almighty. Father, we pray, Father, for the people, Father, for every culture and every race in, in, in that represents uh, represented in Europe, Lord God Almighty. Lord, I pray, Father, oh Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you have a good plan for them, Father, and your plan is that none should perish and that everyone will be saved Lord God and everyone will taste eternal life Lord God Almighty. Father we are praying Father just as it was in the beginning Father as your spirit hovered over the earth Lord God. So it is hovering over Europe Father. Drawing men, drawing men to repentance Lord God. Father working and perfecting God's will in that, in that continent Lord God Almighty. Father we also thank you Lord God Almighty that he is working in power Father. Uh, uh, through obedient believers. Father, we pray for the church, Lord God, in Europe, Lord God, for the body of believers that will stand up against the grain, Father, and contend against things that come up that are contrary towards your word, Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you, Father, for the churches that are equipping and sending out evangelists, Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you for the churches that are coming together and interceding for the nations, Lord God Almighty. May there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit, Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your spirit falls mightily on those churches, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Father, we're thanking you, Lord God, for men and women that are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Father, that will lay hands on the sick and see them recovered, Lord God Almighty, that will raise the dead, Lord God Almighty, that will cry out for revival in that nation in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we are praying that your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Great prayer. Thank you, Gary. Living and working God, thank you for making us realize we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can make change in the world and we can have an impact on other people and nations. I believe you deeply love Asian people. They also need to experience your love and power, especially the Holy Spirit. Even though there are many churches they are fast asleep. They don't know your real power. And few are filled with the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, many people still have not heard the gospel. Arouse them, awaken them, renew their hearts, and raise them, stand up. I pray Christian Family Center can be used to do, to do it. Help this church send your people filled with the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. for people in Asia. Yes, thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing the movement of the Holy Spirit in Asia. Yes, thank you, Lord. I sincerely hope numerous people in Asia come to you and believe in you. Be baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. Spread the gospel and build up new churches. I firmly believe you perform and achieve this soon. Amen. Right. In the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we bring before you the Americas, south and north. Lord, we think of the beautiful country of Brazil as they prepare to host the very best of young athletes from around the world. Lord, we pray for safety and well-being for all involved. Father, we pray for peaceful competition and a continued atmosphere of friendship and mutual respect. And Lord, now as we look north to the United States of America, we pray for her people at this very important time in their history. May the wisdom and guidance of your Holy Spirit be with them 
as they exercise their right and privilege to choose their leaders. May your peace and stability be upon that nation and let it be a shining light for all others to see. Lord, we pray for all the leaders and rulers of that region. May they remember your values and truths as being the very foundation upon which their nations were first established. For your glory, amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Thank you. Well, they were really heartfelt prayers. Please take your seats. You know, I forgot to mention that Steve West and I were talking. Steve is actually going to East Timor in, in a couple of months. I just thought of you, Johnny, going with him as well. I mean, it would be, they're going right down to the south. And we've got an expedition. The CRC is actually looking. I've been twice to East Timor. Steve's been about seven or eight times. But uh, we've been asked as a movement to go to the most difficult area right down south that, by the Timor Sea. And there's no real evangelical Pentecostal witness in that area. It's a, it's a significant area, hard to get to, and from Dili. And uh, so Steve's going to go and, uh, with another CRC pastor. And uh, it'd be wonderful if uh, we had, um, we're trying to get some Papua New Guinea pastors to go, and even some people here, people like John Zumas and others who've got fire in their belly and are prepared to go and they can fund their own way, that would make it even better. <laughs> just a thought, John. No pressure, just talk to me afterwards, we'll have a talk. As I conclude with a time of prayer, the Gospel of Mark. When he wrote up the Great Commission, we've read Acts 1, 8, the key verse for our series, read Luke 24, and this is uh, Mark's version, and he emphasises, get this, the miraculous signs that are connected to receiving the fullness of the Spirit. When you have the fullness of the Spirit, he said to them, go to all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This is Jesus speaking. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. But whoever does not believe, people who reject the message will be condemned. They consign themselves to hell because they refuse to put their trust in the only one who can rescue them from sin and Satan and hell and damnation, Jesus Christ, through his life, death and resurrection. And that breaks his heart and breaks our heart. And he says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. Those who are believers who put their trust in Jesus. It doesn't say pastors, church leaders. It says believers. You're a believer. In my name, they will push back the devil, drive out demons. How's that? Divine deliverance. They will speak in new tongues, divine languages, new languages. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. It doesn't say go and pick up your local brown snake and take a bottle of methylated spirits and test the Lord. It says when accidents happen, when difficulties arise, he says God will protect you. If you're in the center of his will, divine protection is yours. Divine deliverance, divine languages, divine protection, and they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Divine healing. Man, God provides healing for us today. Why do we have so many doctors and nurses in hospitals? Because we believe people should get as much help as they can when they're sick. So does God. Who puts the ideas in people's minds to come up with creative inventions to bring cures and, and answers? I think it's the God of grace who inspires people to do that. So, so we believe in healing. God believes in healing. We want people to be made well and to live life to the full here until they go and meet their maker. And so he says here, hey, get the best you can from natural medicine. And Dr. Luke, he was a medical doctor. He actually gave advice to Paul on a medical level. He said to Timothy, you need a little bit of, little bit of red wine for your tummy. You've got a problem there. And he's not saying go and become an alcoholic. He says there's something there in Greek wine that's really good, not Aussie wine, <laughs> that will do something for the ulcer or something that's bugging you, boy. And so a little bit will be good for you, okay? So yeah, medical advice, how's that? But divine healing, where the arm of man cannot help, we say, God, you can help us. And it says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out, they obeyed, they trusted him, they spoke, they preached, action, faith, proclamation, words. And the Lord, get this, Jesus worked with them. Now they couldn't see him, 
He's in heaven at the Father's right hand. But through the Holy Spirit, he's working with them and confirmed his word by the signs, demonstration. Demons were pushed away. Divine languages, the gift of speaking in tongues, divine healing, supernatural protection. These signs accompanied the message of the gospel. Church, we have time in this place in these next few minutes to get filled with the Holy Spirit again. I'm going to ask our, our team to come up, our, our, our music team. We're going to sing a song in a moment. We all need to get refilled with the Holy Spirit. If you have been baptized, if you are a Christian, you're no stranger to the Holy Spirit. It lives in you. If you've been baptized in the Spirit, it means the Spirit's been released from within you and you now have an empowerment and that divine prayer language, the gift of tongues, is the means by which you can just keep yourself filled with the Spirit. If you've received the Lord as your Saviour and if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit but you're not using your prayer language, if you've been blessed with this marvellous gift, you need to keep using it and to be refilled each day. We need continual re-empowerment to enable our witness. If you don't have this powerful gift of speaking in a new prayer language that bypasses the mind, spirit to spirit, where you yield control of what you say and allow the Holy Spirit to inspire you to speak words that you haven't thought of. You don't lose control of your mind, you just, just yield control of your speech faculty to allow the Spirit to inspire you to speak the finest words of the angels, the finest words of human languages. Man, we need that gift. I use it every day, rarely a day passes. This morning in the shower, as I'm driving here, I'm obeying the road laws of South Australia, but I'm speaking in my heavenly language. Hallelujah. For about 10 minutes, just worshipping him. Not like this. I'm driving. <laughs> you don't lose control of your mind. You yield control of what you say. Any religion that says you lose control of your mind and go to some crazy stance, that's not of God. That's out of control stuff. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of self-control. But we yield to him and allow him to inspire language that's in the, that is beautiful prayer. When you don't know what to pray and how to pray, he inspires you.